Hello everyone. I am so glad that you could join me again. Today is the third day of spring, but our weather is anything but spring-like. It's freezing cold outside and it's super windy too. For a touch of spring, today I want to tackle some spring cleaning projects and I want to continue planting seeds. I picked up some more of these nifty seed containers this morning. As a reward for all of this work, I'm going to make some super delicious cashew butter cookies that we can drizzle with melted chocolate and we can enjoy our cookies with either coffee or tea in the music room. So please come hang out with me and we will see what we can accomplish. The first thing I'm going to do is polish this silver urn. We are hosting an Easter brunch here next week and I plan to serve the champagne from this urn. In other words, I will put ice in here and the bottle of champagne. And I want this urn to gleam. This urn was a thrift store find. It is horribly tarnished, but the silver is completely intact. I think it will shine up beautifully. I'm going to rinse this under hot water and then we will see how the urn turned out. Wow, the difference is night and day. This thing was so horribly tarnished. Now you can see your reflection in it. And I'm just buffing it to a super high shine. I know silver is not everyone's cup of tea, but I do love it because I like to surround myself with beautiful things. And I hope you surround yourself with beautiful things too. I'm very happy with this urn now. Remember when I said that we are hosting a brunch here? I might as well polish my silver as well. We purchased this silver at an antique shop in Lenox, Massachusetts many years ago. The silver was made by a company called Reed and Barton. It's from the 1940s. This Reed and Barton pattern is called burgundy. Some viewers have asked how often I polish my silverware and the truth is, I polish it whenever it needs it. We have polished all of this silverware. Now I need to wash it at the kitchen sink. The silverware looks just great after polishing. I'm just buffing the silver. It feels great 
to have all of this sterling silver and this silver urn in gleaming condition. Let's move on to the next project. I want to vacuum the stairs and I think we will vacuum the window hangings as well. The window hangings here in the parlor and elsewhere in this 200 year old house look as good today as they did when I designed and installed them nearly 20 years ago. The only maintenance they require is vacuuming four times per year. I can link the cordless vacuum I am using here in the description below if you are interested. This is the forsythia that you and I clipped in a previous episode. I love the golden flowers. Next, we need to clean the window hangings in the entrance hall. Thank you for keeping me company, friends. On to the music room. These window hangings are an exact replica of the hangings that were here in the 19th century. In the comments below, let me know if you too are busy spring cleaning your home. I only wish I could be there to help you. Vacuuming the stairs is probably my least favorite cleaning job. But with two cats and a dog in this house, the job must be done frequently. I vacuum the stairs at least twice each week. Since I have the vacuum out, I might as well vacuum all of the wood floors. Afterwards, I will mop the floors. I can link the spray mop in the description below if you are interested. Well, that was a lot of cleaning, and I won't pretend that I am not tired. Let's take a break and head over to Tierra Farm. I want to pick up 
some cashew nut butter, and some chocolate so we can make the cookies I mentioned earlier. Tierra Farm has the best organic fair trade coffees, teas, nuts, and seeds. They also produce the best nut butters I have ever tasted. The farm ships nationally within the United States. I can link a free shipping code in the description below if you are interested. We are home again. I've put on a fresh apron and now we can make what I think will be some energizing cashew butter cookies. I have preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Now this recipe is super simple. All you need is a bowl and a spoon. One large egg. one teaspoon of baking soda, one third cup or 78 grams of demerara sugar, or you could use regular white granulated sugar. You will need a whisk and a spoon for this recipe. I also need a pinch of salt because I am using unsalted cashew butter. And this is the cashew butter, which I have already measured out. It's one cup or 240 grams. And just stir with a spoon until the mixture becomes very stiff. And that's it. The cookie dough is made. To make this dough easy to form into cookies, I'm going to chill it in the refrigerator for 15 or 20 minutes. My dough has chilled. Let's form some cookies. I was going to use this scoop, but I think it will be easier to just use my hands. So I'm rolling the dough into balls. You will notice I did not put any vanilla extract in the cookie dough. And that's because cashews have such a wonderful flavor. I don't think they need any additional flavorings. Although if you want to add vanilla extract, you certainly may. Now I need to gently press these cookies down just to flatten them a little. This way they will bake evenly. Then I'm going to put this baking sheet in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, we can go plant some seeds over in the old north wing. So under this dome, I have parsley, cilantro, roma tomato, zinnia purple prince, more cilantro, basil, and more purple zinnias. I'm going to put this up on the workstation. One of the seeds I want to plant today is this purple Brussels sprout. This was a gift from my friend Steve. 
I'm going to take this off. This is simply a piece of white tape. And then I want to label it. So this tape is a convenient way to keep track of which seed tray contains what. So I have seed trays over here at this end indicated on this upper level here on the tape and then more seed trays on the lower level. So I know I've already planted these with the Roma tomatoes. So let's get started with the Brussels sprouts. I'm going to use this little skewer to make holes in each of these cells. These seeds are small, but they are not so tiny that I cannot handle one at a time. Now all I need to do is cover the seeds with a tiny amount of soil. This is just potting mix that I soaked. And then I like to water my seeds from the bottom. And I will show you how I do that in just a moment. Back to the light garden it goes. I keep my seeds covered until they germinate. I want to start some other seeds, so let me show you how I do it. So I'm putting seed starting mix in this plastic tub here. Then I moisten the mix with warm water. This is to hydrate the mix. I don't know how many of you are interested in gardening, so I will simply give you a visual overview of what I'm doing today. Now, as soon as these seeds germinate, I will remove the cover and I will raise the seedlings closer to the lights. And now, I want to clean up my workstation and then we can head back to the kitchen to bake off those cookies. One of us is getting hungry. Let's bake our cookies, eight to 10 minutes. cookies have finished baking. You can tell the cookies are done when they develop cracks in the tops. I'm going to let them cool on the baking sheet for a few minutes, then I will transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely. In the meantime, we are going to melt some chocolate that we can drizzle over the cookies. And I should mention that these cookies will firm up as they cool. Our cookies have firmed up. They're a little fragile, but they are firm enough. So let's go ahead and melt the chocolate that we can drizzle on top of the cookies. And I'm going to use the organic dark chocolate dollops that you and I bought at Tierra Farm earlier today. I have not used these before. Let's see what's in them. Organic fair trade bittersweet chocolate organic fair trade cane sugar, organic fair trade cocoa butter, 
and organic fair trade vanilla extract. All good things. I'm not sure how much chocolate I'm going to need for the cookies, so I'm going to guess here. This is probably more than I need, and I wanted to show you the chocolate looks like little coins. I'm going to melt this in the microwave. It will take about two minutes, and every 30 seconds or so, I will give the chocolate a stir with a spatula. Spoiler alert. I had a little trouble with the chocolate decoration, but the cookies themselves turned out fabulously well. Now we can pour the chocolate into the piping bag. I cannot tell you how much willpower it took not to eat one of these cookies before we drizzle it with chocolate. As you can probably tell, I am not a professional chocolate melter. So I poured the chocolate into the bag. It was too hot, so it ran right out through the piping tip and onto my hand, and I don't know if you can see, but onto my workstation. So I'm going to let the chocolate cool for a bit, and then we will try this again. All right, my chocolate has cooled, so now we should be able to pipe it. Now conversely, if you do not want to pipe the chocolate, you could always spoon it on. I'm going for a Jackson Pollock look here. While this chocolate is hardening up, I'm going to brew some coffee and then we can have coffee and cookies in the music room. Clothes change. Let's head into the music room. Café au crème, a cookie. Mm. Wow, these cookies are outrageously delicious. They have the crunch from the demerara sugar, the delicious cashew flavor, and the optional chocolate, which for me, I guess, is not really optional. And obviously, since these cookies contain no flour, they are gluten-free. Thank you for spending time with me today as we polished some silver, we cleaned the window hangings, we vacuumed the stairs and the floors, and then we mopped the floors, we planted seeds, and we made some incredibly wonderful cookies. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I can put a couple of my other videos at the end of this one 
that you can enjoy between now and my next upload, which I think will be on Thursday or maybe Friday. In the meantime, please take good care of yourself. Please treat yourself extra well, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, friends. Thank you.